Awesome. Uh, hello, guys. I'm Mohamed Adeleke, uh, African Musota after business growth expert. I'm a serial entrepreneur, father of two, two awesome boys. Um, of course, the topic of uh, that we are going to be talking about today is an outstanding uh, topic. Uh, it's going to change the game. Uh, it's uh, how to survive, how to, to be super successful in bad economy. Yes, how to be super successful in bad economy. Uh, bad economy is good news for strategic entrepreneurs. Uh, and of course, it's bad news for tactical entrepreneurs. If you have been following me for long, you know that my rants are special. They are special rants. So let's know your location and where you are, you are joining me from, your name, uh, and where you are joining us from. Also, share this video uh, on, across your social media platform so that people can benefit from, from this. Of course, as I already know, uh, to many people, uh, we are in a very uh, serious economic situation uh, that is called pandemic. But of course, I'm going to give us insights and strategies and principles, frameworks to follow to, to enable us to become super successful in this uh, economy. So your name and where you are joining us from. Your name and where you are joining us from. If you can hear me loud, loudly, I also want to confirm that you, are, you can hear me cloud, like, loudly. Let's know your name and where you are joining us from and your expectation uh, for this special uh, event. Your expectation about this special uh, event. Trying to confirm on my phone. Okay. So let's know your name and where you are joining me from. Also share this video so that other aspiring and existing uh, entrepreneur can, can benefit from this. Share this video so that other aspiring can benefit from this. If you are just joining us, I'm Muhammad Adeleke, Africa most sought after business growth expert. I'm a serial entrepreneur. I've built uh, multiple successful business uh, from scratch to seven, eight figure. Uh, one of my business did over one million dollar last year. Of course, in transaction, and this year we are set to to do twenty million uh, US dollars. And we have put necessary system in place to to achieve that. Okay, fantastic. I have Jamil Adebayo from Portacourt. You are welcome, uh, Mr. Mr. Jamil. I've known uh, Brother Jamil for some for quite numbers of years now. So also share this video so that people can benefit from this mind blowing, uh, mind shifting section. In fact, the topic itself is the way it's created is, is, is outstanding. How to be super successful in bad economy. Like I said, uh, bad economy is good news for strategic entrepreneur and bad news for tactical entrepreneur. You can write this down and uh, continue to act and reflect on this. Because one of the major things now is that uh, everybody shares, most, most people they share bad, they share fear, they share uh, news that are depression oriented. But you, if you start seeing the bad economy as an opportunity for you to make money, then your, your perspective, your, your, your moves, your action will automatically change. I can end up making more money because there is a lot of money where there is mess. You know what? <laughs> when uh, everything is set, when everything is predictable, anybody can get results. Yes, when the economy is, is not turbulent, everybody can get uh, results. But when the situation is challenging, it's only men that can get results. It's only strategic entrepreneurs that, that can get results. So one of those core things is our mindset. Is our mindset. The economy is not going to be better, but we can create success for ourselves. And uh, of course, in bad economy is where you make, where people make most money. 
Uh, of course, what happened in the last 10 years, uh, that is before 2020, the changes that happen, uh, compared to the changes that will happen in the next two years, is very, is very different. So we are going to experience a lot of more changes in the next two years than what has happened in the last 10 years. Just look at what happened even in 2020. A lot of unpredictable events actually happened. And uh, nobody told us Corona is coming. Of course, when it came, a lot of people have, we have different type of people. Some uh, went into depression. They didn't take any action. Uh, Why some, uh, they, they assess it as reality. But even at that, they are not acting on how they can survive. Why some, they took massive action to be able to survive. And Corona has come and we are managing it. So one of those first things that is important, and I'll be starting with that, which is, has to do with, um, it's, for, it's for us to assume control. It's for us to do what? Assume control. If you want to survive, uh, not just survive, and be super successful in a bad economy, you have to assume control. It's very key. You have to assume uh, control. If you want to survive and thrive in a bad economy, you have to assume control. Uh, and that is one thing the government has uh, created in our mind, that we rely on the government. We rely on the government, we rely on politicians. Uh, when anything happens to us, we blame it on the government. See, uh, one of those ways you can actually change your game is for you to put your life in your own control, assume control. Don't leave everything, don't leave your life to the government. In fact, that is one of those, those reasons why it's not even strategic to vote. Because immediately you vote, uh, you have put your, your future in the hands of the politician. It's just like people that are gambling. They've put their future into gambling. So you have to assume control. And how do you assume control? That takes me to number two points on how to be super successful in a bad economy. It's for you to set 10 S goals. Yes, it's for you to set 10 S goal. Uh, we are in February of 2021. A lot of people had a lot of uh, goals and resolution in the beginning of the year. Of course, uh, uh, me as a Muslim, we have lunar calendar, but um, for those people that set goal in January 2020, uh, maybe day one, day two, day three of 2020, how far have you gone on those goals? How far have you gone on those, on those goals? One thing about uh, goal setting is that if, for example, you want to make, uh, let's say 10 million, let me use a figure that some of us can connect with. Let me not use uh, high figures. You want to make 10 million. One of those things you have to do uh, to achieve that is number one, 10x that that's your goal, 10 exit. Change it that you want to make 100 million. Yes, change it that you want to make 100 million. Uh, that is what you call 10 years. In terms of the expected outcome, the expected uh, results. But uh, having done that, it does not stop at just setting 10 years ago. And that thing that is very, very key, that is important you do, is also to now, uh, of course, itemize ways and strategies, sources of how you are going to make, of how you are going to make uh, the 10 million. But since you are times seeing it times 10, you are not targeting 100 million. It means automatically the effort you need to put in we need to become time stem. We need to become time stem. That's one of the big secrets of how to actually become super successful uh, in bad economy. Since, for those of us that are watching me live, since when you are born, has the economy ever improved? It hasn't. But of course, your own personal economy can actually improve. But looking at general economy itself, uh, it has never improved, and it's not going to improve. But you, you can create your own economy. 
once you create your own economy. Because one thing about wealth creation is that uh, the total amount of billions we have, if you were to share among everybody, uh, what will end up happening is that uh, that everybody now have the same amount of money. Let's assume the total amount of money we have is one billion. Of course, it's more than that. Uh, and it is not shared. And let's assume the total population is also just one million. It means everybody can get a million each. If that money is shared equally among the 100 million people, uh, within couples of months, that money will still go back to those people that are wealthy initially. Why? Because they have value to offer. So that brings me to number two. But I'm going to dwell more on this, to number three, but I'll dwell more on this uh, number two point, which is setting 10S goals. 10S goals is very critical. 10S goals is very, very uh, critical. Uh, and what 10x goals simply means is that if you want to achieve anything, 10x the expected results, the expected outcome. And now, uh, now uh, invest 10x action. Now invest 10x action. 10x action. See, there is nothing bad about setting a goal that looks very unrealistic. Uh, because uh, even if you don't meet up 100 million and you only do 50 million, who is going to arrest you? If your, if your goal was only 10 million, then you now change it to 100 million. And you now itemize uh, strategies. You double up your strategies times 10, your income source times 10, the energy you're going to put times 10. And you end up doing 50 million or 70 million. Nobody is going to arrest you. One thing is that if you, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you target to be a first class student, you can end up becoming a 2-1. Two, a two and if you target that, oh, 2 one is enough for me, then I'll come and kill myself. You can end up becoming a 2-2, two, two, if, no, if not third class. That is why 10x, 10x your goal is very important. 10x your expected result is very, very important. But 10x is a scam. If you really want to 10x the 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 outcome you are looking at without having ten x your own input. You have to also ten x your your input. It's very very uh, critical. If you are getting value from this presentation, type I'm getting value. If you are getting value from this presentation, type I'm getting value. I need engagement. I need engagement. Then if you also have questions about strategies on how to actually ten x your goal, or you want to know more about the principle of 10x, you can, you can note your question, or you can even drop it uh, in the chat section. I'm going to address them uh, accordingly. So now what you need to do now, because my own type of class is not like an academic class. When you follow me on YouTube or Facebook, even on my WhatsApp status, by the type of rants, I call them real rants. There are things you learn uh, that you can't get from the university. They are like missing chapter in the university. Uh, so, what you now need to so what I'm trying to say in essence is practical because even most of us you cannot even remember our, our project topic. Now you talk of we even using it, uh, and that is how bad our economy, our educational system has been. So your first step now is that we are in already in month two of 2021. Most of us we have set a lot of good on on how we are going to actually make 2021 uh, super special. How we are going to have exponential. Uh, results, how we are going to uh, make a lot of money, add a lot of value. You need to now go back to those goals and start um, and start uh, the next in it. Yes, you are planning to, to make 10 million, target 100 million. And then automatically your input, your source of income, you have to turn next it. The energy you are putting into it, you have to double up on it. If, your, if, your, if in your industry, everybody is really advertising on one channel, start advertising on in 10 different channels. If in your industry, everybody is only uh, getting referral from one source, try and look at 10 different sources you can get referral. Or for example, there are even some outstanding where you can get it. If people are doing 
one-on-one -on -one marketing. In your own case, you can, con you can consider using social media marketing because with that, you can be able to, if, some, if you are targeting to reach 100 people and now you want to get 1,000 people, of course, you have to use some outstanding strategy to enable you achieve that. If people are doing one-on-one -on -one marketing, you can try and do cluster marketing. So let's assume you have a product that is targeting uh, maybe medical doctors. Instead of you, if, if you, all your other competitors, uh, they, are, they are targeting doctors one-on-one, -on -one, going to the hospital one-on-one -on -one for presentation, what you can rather do is to look at, okay, in that your state or in that your environment, in that your community, uh, do we have an association of maybe uh, medical association or association of, doc of, of doctors or association of private hospital owners? Then have a, have a, 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 a stri strike a deal with, with, the, with the chairman or the secretary of, of, of that association. Then you go and do presentation to 50 or 100 uh, hospital owners at once. So that's one of the strategies you're using to actually 10x. Because when you say 10x, it actually requires more energy. But it does not mean that, it does not mean you are going to do giri giri. No, it's not about giri giri. It's about you, uh, about you inputting more of, of, of it's, it's more of brain work. It's more of brain work uh, that will enable you to get those outstanding, outstanding uh, results. Like for for example, when maybe you are you are you are you are you are, you are, you are, you are an artisan, or you are a service provider, instead of you providing service for people for free, because the economy is is hard, they want to start providing service for free. So when you get free, you can be able to now upsell them for them to pay. Instead of you doing that, it's a slow lean. Why not consider getting an authority in that field? Maybe if you are a fashion designer, why not consider sewing clothes for your king? For your points, for somebody that is notable in your environment, if, you, if for example you are into shoe production, you, you you design customized shoe. Why not consider designing an outstanding shoe or a, a correct palm and give it out to somebody that is notable uh, in your environment that is that is, that is high net worth as a gift? Automatically, it's going to tell other people about your services, and from there you get free. Add that, and from there you can actually be able to get more customer that will pay you big money without speaking a lot of grammar. That will pay you big money without speaking a lot of grammar. Uh, for example, if for example you are you are a copywriter, you can consider writing sales copy for 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 maybe a very big personality. Then from there automatically you get free you get free recommendation. Based on that recommendation, you need to be writing proposal. But I've worked with S Y Z. I've been able to go as well as it sales with so, so, so amounts of within the sh within short period of time. From there, you can be able to get people that will that will want to subscribe for your service. This is one of the outstanding way you can be able to go. Uh, you can be able to make a lot of money in this economy because one thing is that when everybody is zigging, you have to zag. You can write this down. When everybody is zigging, you have to zag. In bad economy, don't follow the masses. Because in most places in the Quran also, any, anywhere you hear that a lot of people are on that path, it's definitely not a sweet path. The same thing applies to the Bible. Because one thing is that uh, when everybody is doing something, before you know, next thing is till tomorrow, before I start. But of course, if you want to go extra mile in this bad economy, what you have to do is that even, be, even when you wake up in the morning, instead of you waking up by four, for example, you can't. Okay, awesome. Okay, I had a little network glitch. You can attend waking up by 3 o'clock and invest extra one hour in your own career development. So while your own colleagues are closing by 5 o'clock, you have already woke up early one hour ahead to invest the first one hour of your time, of your life, a day, in, in building your capacity. Then when you close in your office again, you also invest extra hour, either implementing what you learned in the morning, or trying to do other things that enable you give more results to the company. With that, you can be able to, because if, for example, you are committing just one hour per day to build a particular skill set that is relevant to either where you are working as a career person or you are an entrepreneur, if you can commit one hour per day and do it for three months, you will experience a lot of difference. So when you talk about 10x, 10x is a scam if you are not ready to input 
10x input. It's very critical. So like I said, all of the action points, because I know we are like still in early, early part of the year, go back and look at your, your goal for the year, 10x it, in terms of how much you want to make. Then start looking at strategies you can, you can, you can use to also be able to get more, to, get, to achieve that your 10x uh, outcome. That is very key. The other thing that is very, very important is that uh, go all in. Go all in. Go all in. When I say go all in, uh, anything you do, put in extra miles, put in extra, extra effort. Uh, for, for example, if you're a career person, most career people, what they actually do is that once they start a job somewhere, after two to three years, they quit, go, to, go and get another job in another place. Before you know it, by then they are age 50, age 55. They've not worked in a place combined for, for five, for even five years, not talk of eight years. So they don't even qualify to get any gratuity or any pension. Why? Because even when they are working, they are seeing it as, okay, let me just branch here and work for a while. Then from there, I move to other places. Then for those people that are also business people, most people, they start business. I, I call it most business owners or most entrepreneurs, they are technicians. They are technicians suffering from entrepreneurial seizure. They are what? Technicians suffering from entrepreneurial seizure. In Yoruba, that's what you call giri. So most entrepreneurs, they are technicians suffering from entrepreneurial giri. See, the fact that you, you are able to, you, you are working in a place, and you can do that, that job or that role more than your boss, does not mean if you start it on your own that you can succeed. Because the technical aspect of a business is far different from the business aspect of a business. And for you to be to be to, to be uh, super successful in any skill, you have to spend ten thousand hours. You have to spend ten thousand hours. So when I say go all in, for example, if you want, if you want to go into a particular business or your existing business, before you you start adding additional business to it. Try and squeeze the juice out of that current business, as in optimize the opportunity in that business. For example, because my own type of analysis, uh, I, I try to, as much as possible, give a lot of analysis so uh, people can get value. For example, if you are a tailor, an average person that has a fashion house, what they do is that they do the sew clothes. You can go extra mile and start doing training, open a fashion school. That is another level of your same industry, you are not starting another business and saying you are a general contractor. Because when I see many, many entrepreneurs, of course, perhaps you that you are watching me, it's not your fault. On your business card, you have something like, uh, I'm here, I'm B, I'm C, I'm general contractor. What does it mean? People don't want to deal with generalists. People want to deal with specialists. People like dealing with specialists, not generalists. You can type it in the chat section. People prefer to deal with specialists than general than, than generalists. People try to like to deal with specialists than general contractors. So what I'm trying to say in essence is that if you're in any industry, even look using the tennis group or in a bad economy, don't start jumping up and down doing a lot of businesses. Focus on a particular business and squeeze the juice out of that business. For example, you are into fashion designing. Open, start a fashion academy. It's still the same line. So at, why, you are, why you start your fashion academy? You are still making money from fashion, uh, from, from sewing clothes for people. And while doing that, you, you are also still making money from the academy part. And automatically while doing that, you already, you still be using existing space for it. You have existing client base. Then automatically, you have fund from similar business. Is that as if, if you are, for example, if you are running the fashion academy, the high tendency that you still be using the same environment, the same location, possibly just get another uh, office close to your office where you can still be, where you can have your, your training school. Then you want to go next step in the same industry is for you to now start teaching people the business of fashion. Because there is a difference between fashion designing or you are running a fashion academy and teach people the business of fashion. There are three different things entirely. There are three different things entirely. And of course, they actually require 
different type of skill sets. Because if, for example, you have a, you have, you have, <laughs> you are a fashion designer, you are always on machine, either, either a, either a, 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 a manual machine or electrical, whatever, you are a technician. Because my, my issue with most people that are entrepreneurs is that they have this wrong mindset. There are some, there's this mindset of, I can do it myself. Nobody can do it more than me. See, it's a technician mentality. It's a what? It's a technician mentality. And when a business is just starting, technici technical skill matters, but it's not the most important thing. See, for you to succeed as an entrepreneur, there are three things that are important. There are what? Three things that are important. You can write it down. Technical skill, managerial skill, and entrepreneurial skill. Technical skill, managerial skill, and entrepreneurial skill. So, but most people, they have these things in one proportion. Maybe 70, 10, 10, 20, or 60, 20, 20. It's not supposed to be like that. In the beginning of the business, uh, you need more of technical skill. Does your business grow? You now need to now have managerial skill and get more technical people that you can coordinate. Then, as your business grows, you now need to now scale up on your entrepreneurial skill so that you have a lot of managers that can manage the technical technicians. But most people that, that, that call themselves uh, have passion for tailoring, I'm an architect, I have passion for architectural uh, design, I like drawing lines myself, nobody can be better than me. That's why they end up doing the same thing for like 10, 10 years without going too far. So what I'm trying to say in a sense is that if you're in fashion, if you're in fashion industry, don't, don't just pause at designing clothes, start an academy. Then, once you start an academy, start teaching people the business aspect of the fashion industry and start uh, create a blueprint of how to succeed in the fashion industry. Start selling that blueprint, one, to your existing students that are students of your academy and to also people that are even in the same location and following and beyond your own immediate location. From there, you can be able to actually make more money. So that is how... 10x actually uh, work. So that is just an example. And you can actually just look at the business you are doing critically. Look at how to first optimize before you innovate. Look at how to first optimize, squeeze the juice out of that industry, out of that sector before you now innovate. Then uh, I'm talking about the point go all in. So go all in means go extra mile, go deep. Uh, focus, on that, focus on the business you are doing and get a lot of results from it before you now start another business. Because there is this myth that uh, don't put all your, all your egg in one basket. See, you can actually put all your, all your egg in one basket, but you protect the basket very well. The one is now, once you now gain some level of traction with that one basket, you can now go to another basket and start putting egg in it. And that is the problem with most people that, that, are, that, that, are, that, that are working class. They believe that, okay, salary alone cannot make you rich. So you have to be doing your salary work and still be doing extra side also. Or you want to quit your salary job and go and start being on your own. See, if you are not, if you are not coordinated, if you, if you cannot put food on the table, you will not be able to actually focus on one in any side. Also. So what you can actually do is that before you quit your job, Start another business, grow it gradually, test it, get some, get some feedback. Once you see that, okay, this thing is scalable, that's when you now move. That's actually to, to, that's one, of, that is one of the best ways to succeed in a bad economy, and that will make you to be super successful. Then, more importantly, uh, for people that are business owners, uh, in bad economy, there are a lot of things that people do. do. For example, lowering of price, firing of staff, reducing budget or marketing. Those are not the things you are supposed to do if you want to succeed in a bad economy. If you want to really succeed in a bad economy, you have to go extra mile and you have to build a system dependent business. Because if you, if you have a business, a system dependent business. It means your business can be able to run with or without you. It means your business 
is sellable. And that will even make it possible for you to even uh, squeeze the best out of that industry and make it, make it possible for you to be scalable. And it's going to even make you more effective and maybe you make more money. When I say your business be systemized, it means that your business should be able to run relying on system, not relying on people. Because in bad economy, uh, people lose their job. Because if you have a business and able to pay salary, people will leave. In bad economy, the dynamics of business changes. And once it changes, the total industry can surely be wiped off. But if your business is systemized and you understand the fundamental of how to systemize a business, your business should be scalable. And part of being systemized is that you are innovative. So even before that entire industry be becomes wiped off, you have already started uh, killing it in another industry. Uh, for those of us that, that have been using mobile phone for long, during the days of Nokia, Nokia is the best phone. But what happens to them? They were not innovative. And at a point, they what? They are nowhere to be found in the, in the mobile phone uh, industry. So part of building your system is that your system should have this innovation culture, should have strategic culture. And sometimes in the game of business, when, when I talk about a system, because some of you will say, okay, it's only a multinational company that are systemized. I have to survive first before I talk about system. See, there is no difference between big business or a small business or a business that is going to fail or a business that is going to succeed than system. For those of us that have, if you are passing through Lagos about SS, we will see a lot of companies, big companies that are nowhere to be, uh, that are not functional again just because the business itself is relying on the owner of the company. And once the owner of the company is not available again, what happens? The business collapses. So you have to learn the heart of how to build a business that is system dependent, not, people's, not people uh, dependent. This one is more like, it's like a cost on its, on its own. But the, the, the little uh, strategy is that from the beginning, if you are building your business, be, be start building your business as if you want to sell it. It means that if you sell your business tomorrow to somebody else, and maybe, for example, if you sell the business tomorrow to somebody else, anybody you sell the business to can be able to get the same result that you are getting. Which means that you have a business that can be able to provide, uh, that can be able to uh, provide predictable and profitable results. Um, more importantly, more importantly, is that even if you are not planning to sell your business, if you build it in the mindset that it can be to run with or without you, 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 you save yourself a lot of headache. But if you have a business and you are not planning to sell it, or you don't design it in the way you can sell it, then you have, you have, you have, you have, you have set up yourself for failure. Yes, you have set up yourself for failure. So part of going uh, all in, is that you, you learn about the game of business. You learn about the game of business. How do you learn about the game of business? Uh, get, go for mentorship, attend business school, look for somebody else that is successful in the business, pay the person to teach you about the business. Most of us, we start the business because we, don't get it, we cannot get a job. And because we could not get a job, we start a business. Um, so uh, for those of us that are just joining us or join us uh, in the middle of the section, some of the key points we mentioned is one, for you to be super successful in any economy, you should uh, assume control, assume control, accept the reality and work towards uh, changing your own economy. Then the second point we mentioned is that set 10 S goals, set 10 S goals. Set 10 S goals. So if you have any, okay, let me check uh, some of the uh, comments so I can be able to reply them accordingly. So I can be able to reply them accordingly.
So if you have question, you can drop the question in the chat section. If you have question, drop your question in the chat section so I can reply them accordingly. Also try to share the video so other people can benefit from this mind shifting information. So drop your questions so I can reply them accordingly. I have uh, okay. So your your questions to surround certain ten S goals. Uh, building a system oriented business. Um, going all in and assuming control. So for, for those of us that are just joining us, I'm Muhammad Adelike, I'm a serial entrepreneur, I'm a business chic. Uh, we are talking about um, how to be super successful in any in bad economy. And the key points are one, assume control. Secondly, set 10 next goal. Uh, then go all in, either as a career person or as a business owner. Then uh, be the system dependent business a business that can run with or without you uh, then uh, those are the key points we are actually uh, mentioned so i'll be wrapping up today's session uh, but make sure you you take action on some of the things that have been shared one of them is go back this night and uh, go and look at your goal for the year and start the next thing in terms of what you, what you want as estimated outcome and also uh, uh, map out strategies to, to get more, to, to have more input in getting, the, in getting your 10 next, uh, achieving your 10 next, uh, 10 next goal. Question, how can I build, how can we build system for our businesses? Uh, if you want to build a system for your business, there are three things that are actually important. One is that you have to have what you call a strategic objective, like a, 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 an identity statement, a brief overview of what your business does. That is the first thing. Uh, because most people, they cannot even define what their business do or what their business is into uh, in a very concise and comprehensive way. Your strategic objective you capture uh, four key things. One of them is one, what you do, uh, why you do it, why it matters, and how you function. What you do, why you do it, uh, why it matters, and how you function. That is the first thing that, that will be captured in your brief overview. So that if anybody is joining you from day one, they already know what you do, why it matters, and uh, how you function. Then the second important uh, document is what we call uh, decision-making principles. Decision-making uh, principle. And that is where a lot of things will be captured. Uh, for example, uh, look, look at Nokia, for example. Uh, Nokia, Nokia was a very good company, uh, but at, at a point, because they were not innovative, uh, they, were, they were wiped off from the market. And uh, being big is not enough. Look at Microsoft, for example. Microsoft was a very big brand. When they came into the mobile industry, they failed. Because they came into the market when the market has already entered saturation. Because they were not thinking, uh, they didn't come to the market enough. So to actually systemize your business, it goes beyond uh, a, a, it goes beyond, it's not about how big your business is. Your business can be very small. Even from the day one, you can put a system in place. No one system is, you need to have a, a brief overview. We call it strategic objective. Well, to, for simplicity's sake, we call it brief overview. So I don't speak too much of English. The second thing is you have decision-making principles. You have a decision-making 
principles. Uh, for example, one of our own decision making principles in success trend is meritocracy. What meritocracy simply means is that we give merit based on the level of value that we are bringing into our company as an employee. So with that, it makes employee to go extra mile in contributing, uh, in contributing to the business. For some, for some of us that may not know, Jimmy, for example, Jimmy, for example, is a product of Jimmy, for example, Jimmy, for example, is a product of 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 Google. Jimmy, for example, is a product idea by a staff of Google. Jimmy, for example, is a, is, a, is an idea by a staff of Google. Give me one minute, please. Jimmy, for example, is a product, is an idea by one of the staff of Google, just because they have this system of meritocracy. And that is one of those things that make Google to be a very innovative company. And they are able to, it's a transgenerational, transgenerational company. Like one of our decision making, decision making principles is 80 20 principle, which means that for anything we want to do, we constantly act and seek. 80-20. But let me explain what 80-20 simply means. 80-20 simply means that uh, the world is not created equal. So the world always shakes down to top 20 superstar. You can write it down. You can type it in the chat section. So that this can sink in your head. The world always shakes down to top 20 superstar. Middle 60 forgettable and bottom 20 sandbag. 8020 principle is all about the fact that the world always takes down to top 20 superstar, middle 60 forgettables, and bottom 20 sandbag. Clients, staff, food, cars, plants, everything is not created equal. So because of that, anything you want to do, you have to constantly be thinking be seeking, thinking, and acting 80-20. And that is why for you to build a system dependent business, these three fundamental documents, four fundamental documents are important. One, strategic objective, decision making principle, collection of working procedures, and system for creating and modifying procedures and system for creating and modifying procedures. For those of us that knows the story of Disney World, Disney himself, the owner of Disney, does not see the, he's not alive as at the time they completed the project because he already has a blueprint of how the business is going to be operated. If I'm going to talk, talk, talk about Disney, when talking about system, I'm even going very, very far. I'm going very far. Uh, of course, I, as a Muslim, what coordinates our life is the Quran. That is our manual. That is the system we follow. That is the procedure we follow. And it makes our life much, much easier. Because it's the same God that created the world that knows what is best for us. It's like you buying a car. They told you, put, put fuel, but instead of putting petrol, you put kerosene. That will be easy. So the same thing is what we are, going, we are supposed to apply in our business. That we, we want a business that is system dependent, not people's dependent so they are to, for, so the roadmap for you to to get started in systemizing your business is to have a, a strategic objective decision making principle that guides principles that guides what you do necessarily good when you don't have a procedure for a particular thing for example one of our one of our decision making principles is that uh time energy and money are three important resources we don't save one to lose one what that one simply means is that if, for example, you want to buy a laptop, instead of you going to a computer village, I don't know, it depends on your location, and spend like 500 naira to computer village. If, for example, you are in Lagos or you are in Dubai, uh, instead of you to go to a computer village there or go to Dubai more to go and buy the computer, I know buy it at a nearby grocery shop, a, a nearby shop where they sell it. And if, for example, let me give an example that is more easy for us to understand. If you are in Lagos, 
you are in Ikorodu or you are in Oshodi, you want to buy a computer accessory that is being sold for four five. And but if you go to computer village in Ikeja, you are going to get it for five thousand. Five hundred naira difference. So it makes more. It does not make sense for you to go to computer village, spend transport, spend waste time and energy because you want to save five hundred naira. The same way if you are in Port Harcourt, instead of you to go to a bank to go and buy a, a, a part or a particular item, you can get the same thing in Port Harcourt and the, the price margin is no more than, is not that much. It makes more sense for you to buy it in, in Port Harcourt. Even most of us that do importation, there are a lot of things we buy in Port that you can even get in Araba. Why going to, why going, why buying abroad when you can get it in Araba? But some of those, when you end up buying it, if it's a part, it may not work. You have to send it back again. They refund your money. So take like 21 days when you get the refund. So basically, decision making principle is actually good when there is no procedure for how to do a particular thing. Like climbing staircase. The only uh, principle of guiding is climbing, climbing a staircase is for you to mind your step. And of course, the third document is manuals that guides everything you do. Then, of course, the other one, we call it SOS, System for Creating and Modifying uh, Procedure. But if you need a detailed work tool on how to actually uh, begin systemization, the, the systemization journey of your business, existing business or a new business, of course, you can always uh, contact me or inbox me. Of course, my phone number is plus 234-6955-5553. So um, there are good value from this presentation. Don't just enjoy this alone. Also share it so other people can also benefit. Well, I have passion for helping aspiring and existing uh, entrepreneur. And as much as possible, I, I also like that when people listen to this type of information, they take action on them and also share it. Because two poor people cannot actually help, help themselves. Most of the people that start business, they don't have any, any foundational knowledge about business. Most of them is because maybe they are tired of their boss, they started their own business, or they look for a job, they could not get a job, they start their own business without having any primary aim for doing the business. Uh, so if you are just joining us, let us know your name and your location. Uh, also, you can also drop your question, I will answer them uh, accordingly. Uh, for my one on one consulting, I charge $1,000 per hour. Yes, I charge $1,000 per hour, and that is how deep my content are. But of course, uh, you have opportunity to ask questions, I'll answer them uh, accordingly. Let me check the chat section, perhaps. Maybe I'll see some questions. Uh, yes, people prefer specialist than generalist. So if you are the type of person that have done your business card, after putting you do A, B, C, D, you still put it there that you are a general contractor, go and remove it or that. If you are doing what everybody is doing, you are going to get the same results than them, uh, or a worse result. So you become an average person. You get average results, you marry average wife, you live in average environment, send your children to average school, uh, average secondary school, the graduates go to average university, they also get average job. So average is not a good thing. But you have to be very, very uh, intentional and sophisticated. So uh, basically, of, basically that is how to actually start your journey of systemizing uh, your, your business. So, uh, so uh, today's session has been very outstanding. For those of us that, that joined from the beginning, uh, congratulations. For those of us that joined us uh, late, uh, you can, of course, since it's on Facebook, you can, you can get the recording. You can watch it all over again and take action uh, from, from them uh, so that uh, you can be able to experience uh, a change in your business, in your career, and in your life. Don't just attend the show, say deep, say wow, say you get a lot of value without actually taking action. I've been in the business game for more than 17 years and I've been taking a lot of massive, massive action and that has actually terminated a lot of uh, insults. I've graduated from what we call Benz. Benz simply means <laughs> beginners, entrepreneurs, 
night near Zoom. Yes, so uh, business is very challenging, but we're able to pay a lot of school fees and we are still building capacity every day. I consume content, I pay for a lot of course. Last year, I, I, I had an MBA. Of course, this year also I've been with another MBA program. Uh, of course, even the, uh, I, 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 to build more capacity, I, I was not in the country for like three weeks. Um, I was I traveled out for vacation, for expansion and some other stuff. So you have to invest in yourself. Then you see the game of business as a journey. And no matter the challenge, you continue to push. And you see that if you face any challenge, it's a school fees. Looking at Elon Musk that we are all celebrating today, he, 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 if you look at his, his, his storyline, you see that he grew, he grew from failure to failure without losing any form of ginger. And now uh, it has actually paid off big time. So business is hard. It's hard. Business is hard. But rich people do what is hard. That's why their life is easy. And poor people do what is easy. That's why their life is, is, is hard. But of course, the game of business is enjoyable. Uh, so thank you. I'll be uh, logging out for today. Uh, you can check out uh, my YouTube profile. Sh sh join me on Twitter. Check me out on LinkedIn. Even this same Facebook. You see a lot of outstanding and mind-blowing information, uh, videos, special rants. And for those of us that need deeper level of those on systemization, you can check my YouTube profile. You see a lot of deeper level uh, content that is Facebook live session that is focused on systemization. But it's systemization that actually took me to where I am now. I've been able to build a business that has done over one billion dollar in transaction under lockdown. And uh, not just looking at the lifetime value of the lifetime of customer I have, we end up eating uh, more than more than 100 billion in, in, in less than three years. Yes, because that's what we call LTV, lifetime value of customer. There's a lot of these things we consider in, in, in the game of business. For people that are tactical, when they do business, they calculate break even without even calculating what is uh, the lock time value of the lead that, that, that they got. But this is not a class for talking about, about, uh, at, about scalability, or about, uh, about lifetime value of customer. It's a class that is focused on how to be, be super successful in bad economy. I believe I've been able to do justice to this. Let's take action so that even at the end of 2021, we're not among those people that be saying this year was too tough. No. We said this year was so interesting because to be able to go extra man, do what everybody is not doing, be able to get extra results. So thank you everybody that have joined this section. And if you watch this section also later, you can also drop your your, your comments. Thank you.